Hello people. First of all, excuse the mess on my workbench. I am not going to uh, set it up for a video. So, uh, I want to show you how I do electrolysis of salt water to obtain uh, hypochlorous acid, which is HOCl. Um, first of all, obviously you need a vat. This is an IKEA container. It's total 2.3 liters in this case, since it's not filled to the top should be around two liters these are my electrodes these are two big rusty iron bars uh, this one i use as the cathode you see the black wire soldered on which is the negative electrode this one i use as the anode you see by the red lead soldered on the bar and starting off you see that the a cathode is way less rusty than the anode when I took these two electrodes, they were taken from the same bunch, they were equally rusty. Uh, by the time I used them for a while, it is normal that the cathode loses its rust, while the anode is worse off than the starting point, because the anode is always sacrificial. Depending on the material, you might have uh, more resistant materials, so the anode might last longer, but any anode material is going to corrode with time. So why do I use iron bars? Why not, for example, stainless steel? Some of you might think. Do not use stainless steel for electrolysis. Stainless steel on the anode will release hexavalent chromium in the solution and you don't want hexavalent chromium in the solution because it's cancerogenic. Uh, I could use uh, fancier electrodes like titanium or graphite I don't have them handy. These I have handy, so I use these. If some rust is released in the solution, I always sediment it uh, overnight, so the morning after I have a nice clean solution on the upper part and the sediment of rust on the bottom. Even if, uh, given the duration of the reaction, I do not get much sediment at all. So, uh, let's uh, get on with the theory. Uh, by adding salt NaCl to water and applying current to the electrodes, uh, you are going to get a solution of hypochlorous acid, HOCl, sodium hypochlorite, which is NaOCl, uh, and even some um, hydrochloric acid, HCl. You want to maximize the uh, production of uh, HOCl, the apochlorous acid, by itself without getting much of either sodium hypochlorite or hydrochloric acid. This is why the pH of the solution should be ideally at 6. You want 6 because uh, when you get too acid of a solution, you uh, will have an aggressive solution which you might not want to spray on surfaces that might get corroded by the solution itself. When you get too alkaline of a solution you will get more of sodium hypochlorite which is uh, your standard bleach and you don't want bleach for this. So uh, you see I fashioned these electrodes with uh, two hooks that I used to uh, uh, hang them on the sides of the container. Let's fix them better. Okay, here they are. This is um, probably the equivalent of your non-standard uh, system, a half table, a half teaspoon, not tablespoon. A teaspoon is one third of a tablespoon, am I right? This should be half, about half a teaspoon, uh, which is five milliliters. As we said, this is about two liters, actually. I wanted to make uh, around 1,900 milliliters since it should be your half gallon, your non-standard half gallon. So I'm going to pour this uh, NaOCl in solution and stir it up some so I get it nice and saluted in the water. And I'm going to keep stirring until the salt on the bottom is not visible anymore or doesn't solve itself anymore in the solution. The proportion of the liquid and salt is taken from 
uh, a website I will link in the description where a commercial system of electrolysis is presented and they suggest to use uh, one quart of water uh, one quart of teaspoon of salt and just a drop of vinegar which I'm going to add right now just a drop of vinegar vinegar is vinegar vinegar I don't know how you, how you say it uh, the vinegar is supposed to uh, drop the pH of the solution to a value of about six I do not have a pH meter I have ordered one but it will arrive here next month maybe so I've just trust I need to trust the uh, the proportions here so uh, regarding this uh, commercial website they recommend using a quart of water a quart of teaspoon and uh, uh, seven minutes of electrolysis with um, 12 watts uh, power supply which is 12 volts and one ampere since I have a bench power supply behind the vet I just pump it up to the maximum and it's set to 32.6 volts and since this is double the solution with the same proportion between water and salt I will need double the energy so let's make some brief calculations let's see how much current flows between the electrodes right now I'm getting one ampere which is uh, a total of 32 watts of power uh, compared to the 12 watts of power of the commercial system this is uh, a little less than three times the power for two times the solution so I should go about 66% uh, of the time of electrolysis so from the uh, original seven minutes of electrolysis I am going down to uh, uh, let's say four minutes and a half and I'm just checking the time on the camera here so I know when to stop okay so I'm 730 I need to stop at uh, 12 minutes so let's talk for a while um, the commercial side recommends a quart of water a quart of teaspoon of salt some vinegar to uh, obtain a 200 parts per million solution uh, after seven minutes which means 0.02% uh, of HOCl in solution you might want to steer the solution during the whole process so it is mixed uh, and uh, the ions can freely contact the electrodes during this process you will have formation of uh, gaseous chlorine on the anode here and you will have formation of well rather than formation release of hydrogen on the cathode here um, you should be able to see the bubbles both are bubbling because this is as I told you gaseous chlorine this is uh, gaseous hydrogen uh, while the gaseous chlorine uh, bubbles up it will react with the uh, oxidral ions in the water OH minus to form the uh, uh, HOCl uh, hypochlorous acid um, the pH I lower with the vinegar is uh, useful to uh, increase the percentage of HOCl in the solution compared to uh, HCl which is hydrochloric acid which we obviously do not want uh, right now there is still about 32 33 watts of power flowing to the solution and we are up to two minutes of electrolysis process if you uh, smelled the solution right now you would clearly uh, uh, feel the smell of chlorine from this side of the vat since there is uh, chlorine gas being uh, released I will sear it for a while uh, while uh, we wait for the uh, solution to be ready and I will speed up the video in the process almost at the four and a half minutes mark 
at which I will turn off the power supply. Um, a few more words about the uh, hypochlorous acid solution. As you might have already uh, read about it, uh, it is not stable for a long time. Here, I just turn off the uh, power supply and let's remove the alligator clips and the electrodes from the solution. You know this is a solution has taken a clear uh, yellowish color, which is normal. I'm going to uh, seal the top. So we should have here a solution at about 200 parts per million. We don't care very much about the concentration because we know the concentration is fine for uh, nebulization and for uh, surface painting. If you want to uh, disinfect uh, water lines with it, you should dilute it uh, about uh, 100 times, about 2 parts per million for water lines and drinking water. About the um, stability over time, hypochlorous acid by itself is not a stable solution, so it is very unstable if exposed to direct uh, ultraviolet light and I should be removing this container from the open window um, over this table then it's not very stable if in contact with the, the air so this is why I'm going to close the container if you want to store it you should uh, use um, see that this is the oxides uh, sedimenting on the bottom uh, if you want to store it you should use uh, preferably a dark container with a sealed top and store it in a dry place and in a cool place because even temperature is very detrimental to the solution. Any temperature above uh, 25 degrees Celsius, I don't know about your Fahrenheit or degrees, anything way above 25 degrees will destabilize the solution if it, it is a temperature that is kept for a long time, so let's say uh, several days. Uh, you should expect um, an optimal uh, stability for about one week, even if Given the simplicity of um, brewing it yourselves, should grant for uh, daily renewal of the solution. We will wait until tomorrow to have this sedimented and I will pour it in a separate bottle, which is the one I use to uh, bring it to my office to uh, uh, spray around. So, have a nice evening, have a nice day, whatever, and see you soon.